Hello, friends. Um, this is my uh, my first uh, response to a topic of the week, and I'm hoping to uh, to be able to begin to do this more frequently. Um, this is a response to Vince Venturella's um, video on um, responding to converting and and miniature converting and how we feel about it. And so, um, in this video, I'm going to uh, respond to some of the questions Vince uh, posed, and then I'm going to. Uh, share some of my own converted models and kind of talk about uh, what I did and why I did it. And, um, so for me, uh, it's really funny because initially uh, I, I, I had a hang up about converting and I didn't want to do conversions. Um, I got into Warhammer because uh, I had played a lot of Warhammer online. I'd been familiar with the IP for years, but um, I got in, I started playing Warhammer online a whole bunch and I loved my high elves. Um, I love the aesthetic, and so uh, when I started playing tabletop, I wanted to paint everything identical. I wanted everything to be the same as as um, the aesthetic from the game. And so, what ended up happening, ironically, was um, like I didn't want to convert anything. And I had Vince like sitting across the table from me, or sitting over my right shoulder, being like, "Hey, you should convert that. Hey, you should add this. Hey, you should." And I was like, "Nope, nope, nope, nope." And so it's so funny that um, initially I I didn't want to convert anything. Um, e I, even paint schemes, I wanted it to look like it was in the book. Um, but it's funny because the, the next army that grabbed my attention were forest goblins. And this was back during 8th edition, uh, during the twilight of 8th edition. And we had three kits. Um, and so we had a really terrible fine cast kit, the Spider Riders and the Arachnoron. Um, and so there just weren't a lot of units. But I wanted an entire ONG's force that was forest goblins. I wanted infantry and I wanted... Um, my cav options, and I wanted a snotling pump wagon, and I wanted siege, and I wanted all these things that were for the like kind of in the forest goblin aesthetic. And so, I had to convert everything, um, and most of what I ended up doing work was kit bashing. But um, but but needless to say, I uh, I got thrust into it with that force, and so a lot of what we're going to go through today is some of what my forest goblins and the work that I did there. So, in general, now I love conversions. Um, I think that uh, I love to see people put the time and energy into into like crafting and I, like um, for me, I don't think that you can really go too far. I don't think that um, and even like WYSIWYG, like what you see is what you get type rule sets. Like I I feel like if they have um, if they have a melee attack on um, the profile, the model, as long as it looks appropriate, I'm down. Um, I'm okay even like having a spellcaster and having ra a ranged attack profile. Like it doesn't need to be an axe since there's an axe in the profile. So I'm, I'm really like, um, I just think that converting, like people just need to do it and, um, and have fun with it. Um, and again, I'm more interested in making sure the aesthetic for the army looks appropriate rather than the aesthetic for the profile. Um, most of what I've done are, as I said, kit bashing, um, you know, taking pieces from multiple kits and putting them together into a single kit. I haven't done a lot of green stuffing, uh, but uh, I, it's something that I have continued to work on and am learning. I have a future um, conversion project coming up where I'm going to have to learn how to green stuff um, and actually like model things, not just fill cracks. Um, and even fill and cracks, I'm pretty terrible at it. Um, I just, I don't do it. I don't generally see that until I started painting and I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going to paint over the seam, whatever. And then it looks terrible and whatever. So, uh, I'm getting better. Uh, Vincent asked, do we fear converting? And the answer is yes. Um, I, <laughs> when he told me that he was converting Archeon, I, like, I didn't know how to respond. Like, that's a $170 model. Like, what happens when you cut the wrong thing or you break off the wrong piece? Now, legitimately, like, we have glue and green stuff can go, you know, can cover a multitude of sins. Um, but uh, I, um, in general, most of my conversions have been small. They've been bits oriented. They've been into, like, kit bashing things. Um I am working right now on my first major conversion where I've bought like a $60 kit and the entire kit, the purpose was for this conversion. Um, and so I'm starting down the road of chopping up expensive kits. Um, and, and I'll show you guys a preview of what that is going to look like here soon. Um, so 
uh, for me, I felt like it would be appropriate to actually show what I've done and, and kind of talk through some of the basic conversion stuff and, and what I like and, um, and to show you kind of how far I'm willing to go for, um, for conversions and, and counts as and, and, and aspects like that. So let me pull up some of, the, uh, some of my models and we'll go through them. Okay, so let's start with my Arachnarok. Um, here is my, uh, I love my Arachnarok. It's kind of the centerpiece of my Forest Goblin army. Um, it, uh, I wanted this to be my command Arachnarok. So what I found was I was fielding, when I would want to field multiple Arachnaroks, I would end up having like my, com I would, in eighth at least, I would have a command one and then I would have a second additional one that is like a support or, or whatnot. And so what I did was um, I wanted this to feel like a mobile command unit. Like this is where the well, this is where the boss hangs out. This is where the general hangs out. And so, I took a tent from the uh, from the battle for Skull Pass and I put it on top. But I figured, you know what? That you know that's neat and I like it and it fit. Like it, it like it looks good where it's at and it looks appropriate. Um, but I was like, you know what? Every boss needs somebody writing everything they say down. So I uh, I grabbed the little um, like cantilever from. Uh, from the uh, Goblin Town Hobbit kit, and I and I tacked it on top, um, and have the little Goblin, uh, the little Nurgling, the mini Goblin, little Nurgling or not Nurgling, that shows you what I've been working on. Um, the little Snotling scribe with his poo bucket underneath him, uh, writing down everything the big boss is saying or the or the shaman is saying. So, and you can see this from a different angle. Uh, you can see the little uh, the goblins around the edge and um, the tent on top. So overall, this was a fairly basic conversion. Um, it basically involved taking a piece and gluing it on with very little additional work. No green stuff was used here, as you can see by the seams on the spiders. But um, but what you can what you can see ultimately is you can see um, that uh, it. I think it looks good. It looks appropriate for what it is. Um, but not a lot of work has been done. Um, it could have definitely used from me green stuffing some string or um, using some materials to make it look like that that cantilever was actually attached to the top by string as opposed to or by webbing as opposed to now where it's just glued on there and whatever. Um, so this I mean this shows what I've done. It shows some of the weaknesses of where I could have improved on um, with prior projects. So that is my uh, that is my uh, Arachnoron. So the next one I want to show is, were, was my hunting spiders. This was originally going to be my snagla gobspit, my uh, the the stalking spider unit from the um, uh, from eighth edition, which now these don't exist. So now it's just a normal uh, unit of of spider riders. Um, but uh, you can see that like normally uh, with these models, the uh, these legs right here. Uh, at, in the front middle model, so the spider with the green goop in his mouth. Uh, normally, you just glue those uh, the bony protrusions onto the normal spiders, and I did that here. Um, and I was like, you know what? I really like this look. What if there were different breeds of spiders? And I got this idea. You can't actually see this from the images, but um, each of the each spider in the uh, in the spider rider set has a different back. Like their butts have different symbols on them, like a like a skull or some have like spines like these again you can't see it but um they have like spines on their back and i was like what if these are like spiny spiders and i was like oh i'm totally gonna and so what i ended up doing was taking that spiny spider idea and then i went through and snipped and and cut and glued uh these uh spider legs onto uh, the front of each of these spiders, even though a lot of them weren't made for this. And I actually had to like cut in because the legs were connected. So I'd have to like cut in and shave some stuff off. And then I glued these on and green stuff a little bit around just to repair some of the seams and make it look right. And overall, I like how they look. They look like this is a, a very dangerous group of, of, of uh, forest goblin spider riders. So um, I liked it. Um, and again, this was a very minor conversion. I had I attached some legs to the front, and uh, overall, I think it came out well. So, moving on from units that like that already existed, um, let's talk about some of the siege that I did. Um, so, what I did was I took um, and I'd seen some of these ideas um, 
just by doing a Google search for forest goblins, uh, I, I came upon some siege that had been kept bashed together. And I was like, oh, I really like the look of that. And so everything that you see from here on out for or a lot of it for my spider goblin, no, actually all of it um, for my forest goblin spider riders uh, has been basically kit bashed from the Arachnorok kit, from bits on the Arachnorok kit. And so this is one of my, my lava. Um, and these are um, some bits that would normally go on the on the howda to make the uh, the catapult. And so now I just kind of made a standalone. I took some bamboo skewers, um, tacked them in, you know, cut them in half, tacked them to the ground, glued the uh, glued the the launcher to it, and and put some goblins around. And 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 it looks okay. It doesn't look bad. Um, I like it. Um, and again, this is this shows me beginning to use some materials that aren't normally in, um, like these aren't GW materials. These are just normal stuff. Um, where the skewers are, um, and as part of a kit bash or as part of a conversion. So, um, and I felt like this this appropriately represents what this unit is, um, and it looks very force goblin-y. So, um, this next one, um, I I uh, I. Uh, went a little bit farther, um, where again, this is uh, part of the the howda um, that you can see, and I, I made like a little cross beam and supporting, and um, and but what I added to this was um, I actually took the a piece of wire, a very thin gauge wire, and uh, I attached it to a drill at one end and grabbed like I took took three wires, attached it to a drill at one end, grabbed it with a, a pliers on the other end turn on the drill and it wound all the wire up. Um, and so what it made was these, this like entwined wire. And then I snipped it and I, I wrapped it around the end and made it look like part of the actual, like a webbing, um, at, like the string for the catapult. And again, overall, um, I wish I, for some reason I didn't get better pictures of this, a different angle, but um, overall I think it looks well. It looks like a nice uh, chukka. Um, I, the, that, uh, the spear in the middle is actually from the uh, the Savage Orc kit, and I, and I had shaved off one of the hands of the Savage Orc, and luckily I, I scored up the the shaft of the spear enough to to make it obvious that uh, not only is the hand not there, but it, it like because I shaved off the hand and that was going to be uneven, I scored up the rest of it just to look like it was rough wood, and uh, and that kind of concealed where the hand used to be, and so yeah, so uh, again uh, some very minor work. Um, and some minor uh, changes and a little bit of glue made uh, this a couple bits of cast off bits from a howda into something and in a completely different unit. And I love it. Like this is one of my favorite conversions. Well, one of them. My uh, second, probably only to this one. Uh, this is my uh, doom, my doom diver, um, and I did some very similar stuff to it. Um, you can see the bottom half of the the howda is what I used as kind of the front guard for this. Um, and then there's two, uh, I snipped off two of the, like the lava ends and stuck them into the ground. So if you go back to the lava, you can see the skull. This is just that branch from the lava. Uh, and I all, you know, I flipped it around and had it as the top arches for the, uh, for the doom diver, um, the doom diver. And, uh, I took the shaman that's normally on top. I, I cut off one of his, uh, I cut off the hand and put it like a little spear hand. Um, and uh, his pose was just appropriate enough to make it look like he's actually has like a little like gliding wing cape. Um, and I changed his head around to put uh, uh, one of the heads, like the champion head, you know, to, just to change the head look so it doesn't look like any of the other forest goblins to kind of make it a little bit unique. And uh, and overall, I and I and I pulled the the wire trick obviously with uh, um, with the uh, the wire, and so you can see this from a different angle. I uh, wrap the wire around, you can see, and um, and overall, I like I love this Doom Diver. And so what I ended up doing with a bunch of bits, uh, I probably paid three to four dollars for each of these siege, um, these siege items here, um, and they came out to really nice units um, that look appropriate to what I was making. Um, and so I'm really proud of these. Uh, this uh, Doom Diver unit actually won uh, top prize, beating out one of Vince's kit bashes, ironically enough, uh, at my local GW store. Um, and uh, and uh, that a contest that I think they held last year. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, 
uh, again, this is a very this was a very easy, cheap conversion that made you know something that you know you'd probably have to spend thirty to forty dollars on. Um, so it saves money. It looks good. It looks thematic. When I field these with the Forest Goblin Army, there's no question that that these are appropriate to the army. You know, there's no like, hey, where where those uh, where that lava show up with with all these Forest Goblins or whatnot. And so aesthetically, it looks good and. Um, and it looks appropriate to, to what the force is. So, and then finally, um, I'm going to uh, talk about my... So here's kind of pushing the limits of what is appropriate for conversions for me. Uh, this is my squig herd. I wanted a squig herd. And so I was like, you know, for force goblins, that's going to have to be spiders. Um, so I got a bunch of the... Uh, bought a handful of the spider packs from the Arachnorot kit and put a bunch of other bits together. And this is basically largely composed of just like spiders, bits from various kits. Um, the little tree terrain piece um, that you can see the got the that front you know goblin leader uh, standing on. This is back when you you needed unit filler or you could use unit filler, um, and then a bunch of the uh, little uh, spider. So I had a bunch of the snipped bits from those uh, pillars for the lavas, and I turned them into like little spider nests where the uh, where that that these spider web balls, these like hatchling balls. Have been dropped for um, for uh, the by the herders, and so I don't know. I, I think again, I think it looks good. I think it's aesthetically appealing, and I think it's appropriate to what this unit's supposed to be. It's a it's a mass of biting, clawing monsters. Um, but some people might have a problem with this with this not accurately representing the squigs and whatnot. So, but it is what it is, um, and I I love it. Um, and this is what kind of made me fall in love with converting. This is one of the earlier units that I did, and I was like, man, I am all in. So, so this is just kind of a range of, of units that I've done for conversions. Um, and finally, um, something that I'm currently working on. Uh, I've been working on Nurgle, as you guys know, and um, this is the big kit that I've kind of cut up. So you can see I've used the, uh, the Stonehorn kit, the alternate build for the Stonehorn. Um, and I'm making a Nurgle War Altar. So uh, I have some sticky tack just holding some pieces together there to show you kind of uh, what things look like. Um, and yeah, so uh, I, uh, I'm i looking forward to this project. Hopefully uh, I'm going to use this, I think, uh, when it gets done for the, uh, for the upcoming um, Budget of Sigmar, um, the, the, the conversion, you know, conversion version electric boogaloo. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. It uh, and I'm still I'm still working on uh, kind of cutting and gluing and finding out what works and uh, yeah so this is and this is this is kind of the culmination of my conversions uh, uh, where I've been moving towards because obviously uh, there's a lot that's been done here that's different than the normal world or, but I'll get to that later once we do the um, once we do the uh, the actual contest so okay friends um, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for um, uh, bearing with my 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 conversion slideshow. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. What piece did you like best out of my conversions? Which ones did you not think worked? Um, and if you haven't, if you're a YouTube, if you're a content producer and you have not responded to one of these um, topics of the week, uh, make sure to click the link, watch the original video, and uh, and fire up your own channel. Um, and uh, let's hear your thoughts. Um, make sure to uh, sound off in your own video then or sound off below. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Have a nice day.